is driven by Microsoft Azure AD. And uh, then we'll be focusing on identity and access management using Azure AD B2C. Okay. So roughly the agenda that we have for today's uh, session is this. We'll be starting with overview of Azure AD in general. It's a uh, role with uh, respect to identity and access management. Along with it, we'll be talking about Azure AD B2C, how it is different from the regular Azure AD. What all different flavors of Azure AD we have. And then towards the second half of the session, we'll be talking about exactly how to make use of Azure AD B2C, how to create the tenant, how to register the applications in order to get it serviced with the help of Azure AD B2C user store for any authentication and authorization request. Okay, and towards the end, we'll be talking about the best practices and the troubleshooting. So let's start. Let's understand what identity and access management in the cloud actually means. So here, first of all, we need to understand that identity and access management are two different things, though related to each other, but they are two different things, two different entities altogether. So we first need to understand each of them one by one. Let's talk about identity first of all. What is identity? Anybody? Uh, identity is just, just like the roles and responsibility. Uh, Not exactly roles and responsibility. It is more about who you are, right? Like your ID user, card. Yeah, the position and uh, access. Authentication. 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 So authentication talks about what you are known as. So if you talk about the employee ID card, that is your identity within the company. Right, what it carries is your ID number, employee ID, I mean, and name and some more basic details like your date of birth and address and phone number, emergency contact number, etc. Nothing more than that, right? With that, it is just check that whether you are known to the organization or not. Probably the security staff also checks whether you are actually the employee of that specific company or not. In addition to that, you have some access card also, which then checks the authorization, which is about which permissions you have. Correct. So that's where the identity and access management comes in. Identity is who you are, that is authentication. Access management is what role you belong to and what permissions you do have. Right now, when it comes to the cloud, probably you might have thousands of applications deployed on the cloud. Now, for each application, if there is a different user store, individual user store, don't you think it will be actually a headache for the user? If someone wants to use all of those applications? How many users or how many credentials the user is actually going to remember? See, we work with internet banking. If we have three, four accounts, we need to maintain the credentials for them. Then credit cards, different credentials for them. Then maybe your email IDs are there, official ID. You may have three, four personal IDs as well. Then there are other different things also where you have user ID password utility things like uh, if you are using uh, postpaid mobile connection. So there also you have user ID password credential. I mean then electricity for that also you have your credentials. How many credentials do I need? Don't you think it is very, very difficult for us to remember so many credentials? Most of the time we reset the password and we go through, but for that also the user ID should be remembered, right? It may get mixed up at times. So that is where the concept of having a central repository for identity and access management originated. 
if all of your applications are on the cloud and probably if the cloud is the same vendor uh, based cloud that uh, is being used to deploy all the applications it becomes even more easy but again with identity and access management actually it is not limited to the same vendor identity and access management allows you to work across cloud vendors as well so idea is you may have thousands of applications maybe millions of applications also but your identity needs to be just one one common identity which can just allow your applications to understand who you are and on the top of that the access management which takes care of what role what permission you have in a specific app across different apps identity will remain the same your access management or roles will probably differ in one application you might have admin role in another application might uh, you might be having just a simple user role correct so that's the idea thousands of apps and for that you have one identity then this is also important when you talk about business to business or cross organization collaboration you are working with one of your partner and you probably are working on one application of your partner but you you uh, the partner organization doesn't want your separate user id to be created to be allowing you to access their applications rather your active directory which contains your credentials can be communicated to see if this user is a valid and known user or not only the access management can be set by the partner organization at their end to decide what permissions you will have in that application so b2b communication also benefits from this and this gives very very large level of scalability without any it overhead as such and at the end this is all standards based where all the laws for the security which have been set across the world are also taken care of right so you do get something called as cloud powered protection understood you have the complete governance also of what is going on who is accessing my things and what permissions this uh, user has got complete governance you can have in your hand you can get complete reporting also done on the top of it complete user logging can be done right now what is azure active directory its roots are there in windows active directory what is it? windows active directory an entity or a feature of windows server which basically allows you to register users who can log into the network who can access the devices on the network again you can register your devices also so that the known devices get special permissions and guest devices probably are restricted for the network access some features might be working many of the features may not be working the internal resources may not be accessible the shared folders may not be accessible to the unregistered guest devices but who does all this management in a windows network windows server based network it is active directory a general form of this is something what we call as ldap right there are different implementations of ldap and azure active uh, rather i would say the just the active directory itself is the adoption of ldap services in windows where microsoft used the term active directory for their adoption of ldap services okay contains listing of users contains listing of devices contains listing of policies also which might decide the access management and all now this is limited to one specific network what if i am looking to bring the same features on the cloud that is where the cloud active directory comes in 
which is known as Azure Active Directory officially on Microsoft Azure. Right, so what it is a comprehensive identity and access management cloud solution for your employees, not only employees, but partners also where <coughs> Azure AD in general might be used Azure AD tenant in general might be used for employees. Azure AD B2B might be used in case if you are not use uh, allowing only the users of your organization, but the users from your partner organization as well. But at the same time, there might be a requirement where employees, partners and the retail users might also be making use of your application. Where they can register with their own credentials. So in that case, you require Azure AD B2C. Right, and that's what the three flavors are listed on the right hand side here. B2A is business to enterprise. This is regular Active Directory tenant, then B2B and B2C are very specific where you have to configure the Active Directory to behave like business to business or business to customer. B2C is business to customer. OK. What it does is it combines directory services, advanced identity governance, application access management and standards based platform for developers. This is something what we discussed in the previous slide also, correct? Let's talk a bit about hybrid identity. So what this hybrid identity actually is? Any idea? If you are working with on-premises environment to start with, we might already have Windows Server Active Directory services configured to have our users or user stores for all organizational users. And now we have planned to move to cloud. Just because we are moving to cloud, there should not be a different user store created for my enterprise users or organizational users. There should be a way where the same user store from my Windows Server Active Directory can be allowed to be used for the cloud applications as well. Probably for cloud applications, I will create a tenant on Azure Active Directory. But I then want the synchronization support to be established between the Azure Active Directory tenant and the Windows Active Directory services, which I have in on premises environment. So for this we have the synchronization engine, something what we call as DIR sync or dir sync, something called as directory sync, which is actually made possible by Azure AD Connect tool. Azure Active Directory Connect tool. Understood? So it's an automated tool which actually reads your local on premises Active Directory and synchronizes it with your Azure Active Directory tenant. It's a wizard based tool only, so you just need to provide the right information at right times. Probably as a prerequisite, you might need to open some ports so that the cloud can communicate securely with your on premises Active Directory also either opening port might be the case if opening port is not permitted because of the security standards. In that case, probably you need to set up some kind of proxies or gateways or VPNs with the help of which you will be connecting your Azure AD tenant with the local Active Directory services instance so that you have complete control on how the communication actually is made. OK, now here you can see a working diagram for the same. You have Windows Server Active Directory on the leftmost side, then identity synchronization with uh, the sync tool going on. It uses the algorithm password hashing mechanism and then Azure Active Directory basically gets a copy of this. So user attributes are synchronized using identity synchronization services, which basically is based on the password hashing uh, algorithm 
and authentication is completed against the Azure Active Directory only. So whenever the request comes in for the user authentication to the Azure Active Directory, it just settles that authentication at its own end only. It doesn't need to communicate with the backend Windows server, which is on premises. Or which is having the instance of Active Directory services on premises. The other mechanism that we have is we can integrate Azure Di Active Directory Federation services also. So once again, identity synchronization is there, but the password is not copied. Rather, the authentication is performed based on the federation services where the tokens are actually used your act active directory service running on the on premises windows server issues the token which is then maintained by azure active directory service so that it can respond to any authentication requirement which is coming for any user which is not practically created in Active Directory on Azure, but it is created in Active Directory on. Active Directory services in an on premises Windows Server. Right, so both options we do have here. Giving us the flexibility how we want it to go ahead. And then as I said for making the communication secure, you can actually make use of the proxies as well practically for user authentication requirements within an application you probably go for the application proxies so you you use some sort of apis some sort of connector apis with the help of which this is done so the user probably is using some devices to uh, access your application which is hosted on cloud the authentication request goes to azure active directory and via the application proxy it goes to the corporate network, which is probably hosting the user store in its own Active Directory services on a Windows server and then provides the access to your resources. So this is something which is a one time configuration which you have to do later on your application just makes use of this connector directly. Right simply on the right hand side, you can see how exactly it is performed. A connector is available that auto connects to the cloud service. Multiple connectors can also be deployed for redundancy so that the scalability is not a challenge. No matter what number of user requests are actually coming in. Which makes it highly scalable. Which allows you to handle multiple applications and multiple. Sites sites I don't mean the websites rather I'm looking for or I'm uh, talking about multiple endpoints which might be scattered across the world. Maybe for better availability, high availability, you might have multiple instances of the application running at different locations of the Azure globally. Along with the load balancing solution being set up. OK. Connectors are deployed usually on Corpnet or corporate network next to the resources. Basically, they are coupled with your resources within the corporate network and they just receive the request from the cloud that OK, I want this. The response is then prepared at the corporate network level only, which is then put into some queues from where the application picks it up. Application never gets the direct communication with the resources within the corporate or on premises network at all. Right, so last point also talks about the same users connect to the cloud service which ultimately routes their traffic to resources via the connectors. And hence you have complete control on what kind of access will be there and what not. We already have a lot of pre integrated software as a service applications in the application gallery. Some of the applications are listed over here. Probably the names may not be visible due to resolution, but some of the logos you can identify pretty easily. Like this one is for OneDrive. This is for Microsoft Developers Network, right? This is Bing APIs, Microsoft Bing APIs. 
here this is for windows microsoft account not windows microsoft account this is for office 365 this is basically skype this is for dynamic crm okay this is yammer and then there are other third party services also or third party saas applications also which are already available in the application gallery some of which are even from microsoft's competitors in order to have their reach expanded to all the community they actually support each other as well okay now let's talk about b2b or cross organization collaboration see the title or subtitle of this slide it says it, it talks about a use case i need to let my partners or users from my partner organization access my company's apps using their own credentials own credentials means the credentials created by their organization i don't want a different user account to be created at my end i'm sure you might be already using this use case somewhere either you might be working as a partner for some other organization or it could be vice versa also this collaboration these days is something which we cannot avoid because as an as as an organization software organization i cannot do everything on myself right i may have some expertise in some domain some area but what if i'm looking to expand into other domains as well i may not have expertise in that case one option is i build that expertise which will take time rather i can partner with some organization which already has that expertise who can help me come up with the solution for that particular domain quickly meanwhile i get my resources also trained and ready now in this case if i create another user for my partner organization users it will be a overhead on me they already have their credentials created by their organization the organization to organization contract is already there which also talks about the non disclosure agreement which means that the data cannot be leaked from my organization to anyone else right there are restrictions already so i do trust the users from my partner organization directly how do i establish this trust relationship this is where the azure ad b2b is going to come into picture i have my azure ad my partner has got their own azure ad both are azure ad's first of all so i can easily have a trust relationship set up between the two i authorize this ad so that this ad's users are recognized by my ad also so whenever the user logs in user from the partner organization logs into my application using his own credentials of his own company my ad will get the request first because my application is registered there but there it sees that okay this user doesn't belong to the current domain it's not being managed by the current ad instance rather it is registered with some other ad it checks into the trust relationship established where it finds that yes i know this ad tenant and then i ask do you recognize this user once the partner ad says yes i do it also provides a token to me there onwards i just need to keep on checking the validity of the token if the token is still valid i need not communicate with the partner ad at all saving the time it will be as good as whatever the authentication authorization request is going on it's just getting processed and handled locally on my own server own ad server and at the same time i can set up the policies i can set up the permissions 
for authorization part i may not want complete access to be provided to my partner organization users what my own organization users have make sense they, I, I might want to restrict the access to some specific things on which they are allowed to work so i can set up the policies accordingly for the users which belong to a partner organization ad tenant make sense Yes. So one question. Uh, yes. So the Azure AD will be all on the so the, the active directory will only on the Azure side, right? It it can be on any other uh, other cloud like AWS or it, GCP. See, AWS also supports AD, but it will not be called as Azure AD. They have their own name for it, but they do have the AD service. So what in case if uh, uh, Azure wants to connect, uh, connect to the another AWS? Same same so process is there. Same process okay. is there, just that there could be one additional step where you have to authorize the cloud provider first of all before you actually authorize the AD. It's not only AD, it could be some other LDAP service also, which can be actually trusted over here. Understood? Okay, okay. So Thank first you. level is you need to whitelist the cloud provider in that case, if it is two different cloud providers being used. And once it is whitelisted, you get inside the other cloud and then from there you authorize whichever Active Directory or LDAP service. LDAP is also a directory only, uh, which is more on generic side, right? So you can register that also with your AD as a partner. Understood? Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So we do have different mechanisms for that as well. If you don't want the direct uh, trust relationship to be established, you do have the access for the open ID concept as well. Open ID is there, OAuth is there with the help of which you can set up the same. Right? Okay, oh, thank you. Okay, now one of the cases like we are working on Teams as of now, right? We are attending the uh, session uh, with the help of Teams. And we have probably logged in with our respective organization IDs. What if I want to share some file with you? Can I share that? I can share from my end, but will you be able to access it? As of now, the answer is no. No. But is no. it possible? It is. If we have a yes. trust relationship established between, I mean, B2B relationship established between my organization's active directory and your organization's active directory or equivalent once we do that anyone can log in with any organization id who are partnered with each other and can share the files seamlessly not only files they can share anything they can have a common shared folder also in that case common repository suppose you and me are working on the same project so we will require this kind of collaboration very, very often. Yes or no? Yes. Right? Yes, yes. So this is B2B. Even the same thing could be applicable for emails as well, right? Right now, when I send an email to you from my official ID to your official ID, the disclaimer comes. This email has been originated from outside uh, domain. Or, or outside organization or outside user. Use it carefully. If you trust it, then only open it. Do you get these uh, disclaimers or not? Yes. yes, correct. Same as the case when you send an email from your organization ID to my organization ID, right? I will get the disclaimer. But if B2B collaboration has been set up, in that case, simply this will not be treated as an outside user. It will be like inside or in-house user only because the collaboration already has been established. So you send email to me, I send email to you. Because of this B2B collaboration setup, 
it will be treated just like if we are communicating within the team only within the organization only yeah for this probably you will require azure ad premium azure ad premium tenant for enabling the b2b collaboration b2b doesn't have a separate uh template for uh basically creating the tenant but yes there is an option where you can upgrade your regular azure ad something what we call as azure ad basic to azure ad premium once you upgrade the b2b collaboration settings will be available and then you can whitelist okay i trust this azure ad uh, tenant i trust that azure ad tenant apart from azure ad tenant maybe aws ad tenant also is whitelisted i trust it and then the cross organization communication will immediately start understood there yes. is one more case if the partner organization is not using azure ad directory i can still send an invite to you and based on your user credentials by default the user account will be created in my organization's ad automatically for you so it will just look like you are using your own credentials to log into my azure ad there onwards a local account will be created for you automatically right with azure ad premium this is possible now with this b2b what is the benefit uh, that we have discussed it's a summary of the same partners will manage their own credentials so basically in this case i can be more precise over here in saying that partner means partner organization they will have their own it team right they will have their own identity and access management team who will be managing the credentials of their users and because the organization has partnered with my organization my organization it team will be responsible to set up only the policies because b2b collaboration configuration needs to be set up only once and whenever the partnership is broken probably i just need to cancel that collaboration remove those settings policies then can be removed over the time also yes yes so that's what the first point is partner manage their credentials access management is managed by the organization which is collaborating with the partner so suppose that organization is me and partner is you and the third point is all about it doesn't matter what size of the partner it is means how many users are going to be there i can send as many invites as i want at a given instance of time i can send the invite to all the users of the partner organization as well and the number of users there might be in millions as well i i don't care it just works they just need to accept the invite and sign up with my organization so that they can actually work with the resources of my organization as well got it let's next talk about monitoring and protecting the access to enterprise apps so as i said the entire ad setup officially by microsoft has been made in such a way that it is already following the standards that have been set up by different security agencies different governments across the world like in european region we have the gdpr as the new law for security right application and data security okay so azure is already equipped with those features actually comes up with a superset it doesn't 
talk only about or it doesn't follow only GDPR. There are many, many laws across different geographies. Which Azure adapts. It creates a minimal minimum viable product of it. Where it sees that yes, these are the common requirements. So by default, these features are there and then based on in which region the deployment is happening. Those regional policies automatically are there in place. So that's what the built in security features are about, which you can also configure as per your need. By default, there is a governance system. Which does all the security reporting. That is responsible for tracking the inconsistent access patterns means any unauthorized access being attempted. The phishing attacks or hacking attacks being made. Then. The analytical data based on that. And alerts also if there is some critical situation detected say 1000 requests per second being received from one specific IP for the login and all 1000 are unsuccessful. Which itself is an alarming situation, so alerts are also generated. And then at the end you have the complete reporting API driven by dashboards where you can see exactly what's going on. OK, so this is just a sample. Of the same thing. Right. You have the dashboard on the top and then the detailed data at the bottom on the right hand side. Same as applicable for enterprise apps also. We do have built in security features again. Security reporting that. Yeah, and in fact, it is the same thing. In addition with that, we do have multi factor authentication feature as well. So OTP based access or uh, some authenticator app. Integration. Which again is a replacement for the OTPs. Right where you have to approve from the authenticator app. That is all possible here. You just need to configure your. Active directory tenant to behave in a specific manner to provide a specific feature. So what MFA actually is we all know these, this is a very common feature these days. You log into any bank website. Or, or maybe for banking, maybe for credit card, maybe for loan. Whatever banking action you do without OTP, nothing works. Am I right? Yeah. Now. Why it is called as multi factor authentication because while logging in you provide your credentials user ID password. And then the second step asks you for the. OTP or maybe approval from the authenticator app or something right. Multi level checks are there that OK. You have given your password correctly, but that password might be compromised one. Someone might have just stolen your password and trying to log in. So how to identify whether it is you or someone else? That is why this OTP or uh, authenticator app kind of things have come in. Yes or no? Earlier we used to have the physical hardware tokens as well for the same. So authenticator app probably has replaced that, right? Yes. Now this authenticator app will belong to you only. Or OTP will come to you only. So this adds one extra level of. Security check. This may also get compromised in future. In fact, recently we have seen that OK, the SIM cloning also is done. OTP can also be hacked. So definitely in near future we are going to see under form of authentication check which might be added to this chain. So first password, then OTP, then authenticator app, then something else, then something else. Any hacker will probably find it difficult to get into the. Application 
with your credentials if there are multiple security check. I will not say impossible for him, but yes, it will be more difficult, more time consuming. By the time he gets the access, probably you might have changed few other things. So he has to start from zero. Right, so security is always about making the access as difficult as possible. It's not always about securing it. In foolproof manner, that's not possible. That's a myth. Do you agree or not? We put locks on our homes while going out. But, but is it a foolproof solution? No. Locks can also be broken, right? There have been incidents. Yes or no? Yes. But still we put the locks. That is our attempt to make the access more difficult. Maybe we put two locks also. One is probably the interlock or latch, and then there is one additional physical lock that we might be putting from outside, right? Then there is safety door also on which again there are two locks. So it will take time for anyone to get inside. Right, and that's the idea. It's not about making it 100% foolproof, but it's about making it as difficult as possible so that easily someone cannot get into the application. Easily someone cannot get the data. Then there is the concept of encryption as well, right? Even if someone gets into the application, probably without encryption key, they can still not misuse the data. They cannot read the data. Correct? So that's why it is called as multi-level or multi-factor authentication. Right, and how it works, it could be authenticator app, it could be based on the phone call, IVR based, it could be text message that is containing the OTP, right? Now, this is the diagrammatic view of the same. As we have used one or the other application or a web application or a site, where this feature works, we can understand it pretty easily. User using computer or some mobile device, accessing the app. In generalized way, I put cloud apps over there, but that could be a mobile app, communicating with a backend API that is running on cloud, right? Communicates with multi-factor authentication server. If access is granted, then only the access is provided to the on-premises apps also. Right? So this is in case of on-premises thing. But at the same time, if I'm communicating directly with Azure Active Directory, there also there is a built-in multi-factor authentication server. I just need to enable it. So two different scenarios presented. Via cloud apps, I'm communicating with on-premises services or via cloud apps, I'm communicating with cloud services only with the help of Azure Active Directory directly. Yes. Now here. There is some comparison between the Azure multi-factor authentication versus the multi-factor authentication for Office 365. So what is possible, what is not possible by the administrators? Yes means possible and nothing means not possible. Then comes identity governance. Which helps you reduce the risk of excessive access being granted to your organization's data. The overall idea behind governance is to keep a check on what kind of data is being asked by which user. Internal users and then partner users. In case if I'm using B2C, 
it could be the retail users also whether they are getting the right access or not if they are getting the access to something which i don't intend to for this we have the governance which keeps on recording all the actions which i continuously need to analyze right for which we already have the tools available on azure that allows me to analyze the data pretty quickly and then revise the policies if required right so these decisions are always at the business level mostly the other things like the identity creation and configuration is a self service thing then the organization comes with policies for the access management so complete workflow is policy driven which ultimately feeds to the governance details or governance data then with the help of dashboards along with the insights security insights we get the analytics of how the things are working how the things are performing what access which user is getting at what time that allows me to do a complete in detail audit also so that i can see whether i am actually following the compliance needs or not okay any questions so far so as i said the active directory is not always about the authentication of the users it is also about maintaining the registry of the devices which can be officially allowed to access the resources within my cloud right as these days we work or we use different kind of devices to connect to internet and then to cloud to make use of different features and different services it could be a typical computer a mobile device a tab computer can be laptop desktop anything it can be a convertible one also an hybrid of laptop and tab it can be a smart tv it can be a smart watch it can be any smart device for that matter right so which service should be accessible to which device also can be easily managed with azure active directory and as we said the entire platform for authentication authorization is already a standards based one the custom line of business applications can easily integrate with azure active directory with different protocols different mechanisms they can actually get served for all of their authentication and authorization needs as on the left hand side diagram you can see active directory features are available via oauth open id saml that is to token based thing then federation ws federation then rest graph based api and then scim also different protocols different services available already right so the lob apps have a choice how they can get all authentication and authorization requirements service via active directory so ultimately you need to sign into active directory integrated applications with the help of cloud identities if azure ad connect is being used cloud identity is not necessary your on premise identity will also work because your on premise identity will be exposed as a cloud identity with the help of azure ad connect active directory integrated applications can access office 365 and other uh, azure web apis directly they don't require any special permissions 
applications can extend azure active directory schema also i mean they can put in their own extra requirements for say claim based authentication authorization if you are doing by default there are some claims which are held by your user principal object within azure ad if you want more data to be included as the part of the claim you can do that because the entire framework has been built in extensible manner <coughs> so that is the fourth point applications can extend the azure active directory schema as per the need it is completely cross platform supported so you can have ios device you can have android device windows device anything being used for communicating with the azure ad the applications running on any of these platforms can probably integrate with azure ad easily for authentication authorization needs and then as i said allows different standards which are all open standards like saml and oauth then open id then o data federation saml rest based graph apis SCIM, anything you can use over here based on which type of application you are using in which platform you are building and which protocol or which standard does that platform support based on that you can pick choose any okay here now we'll get into some isv solutions which have been already using the azure ad services so it is azure ad or azure ad b2b or azure ad b2c depending on what organization it is and what kind of application it is so a couple of use cases over here docusign then emc square along with rsa there are key use cases also mentioned like docusign if i talk about the use cases are sending documents with docusign from any account contact lead opportunity or custom entity record use custom business process flow step step by step to help standardize process track the status of documents view signed documents and the associated certificate of completion attached to the original entity as a pdf okay so suppose i create a pdf i send it to my manager for his signing and then i track whether he has signed i might require another level of uh, signature or approval from his man my manager's manager so all track i can maintain also there is a way using which i can verify that it is the correct person who has signed it i mean i can verify the digital signature itself okay then some use cases for emc square consistently enforce access controls and strong authentication providing on premises levels of access protection for your saas applications simple end user authentication experience from mobile devices wide range of requirements for context based access security different different requirements for their own application all driven by the single sign on provided by azure ad then there is some use cases from bentley then software innovation i'll not just read out all we can just see that these are some of the organizations which are already making use of azure ad here is couple of other companies and uh, liberman software and then i am cloud then there is biocatch once again there is a different set of use cases from emc square rsa then there is key captcha another set of use cases from im cloud and emc square 
for different applications, different requirements are possible. Then we do have another set from deny all and then Soha Cloud and so on. So that's all about identity and access management driven by Azure AD. You have any questions before we move further? Yes, anybody? So one question from my side, what is the difference between Azure AD and Azure AD B2B and Azure AD B2C. Key difference I'm interested in. Trust relationship. Tell me what is Azure AD basic used for? Regular Azure AD. Authentication authorization. Authentication and authorization. Authent okay, that's applicable for all Azure AD types. Single sign on. For whom? So within an organization, if you are using it, then you will be within organization. Think, yeah, yeah. So Azure, Azure AD is within organization. What about AD B2B? B2B is when you have another, let's say, another uh, company that you are working with. So you are basically yeah. tapping so partner into their organization, uh, one or yeah. more partner organizations, right? Business to yes. More than one Azure AD need to trust each other, correct? Yes. It could be one way, it could be two way, right? Depending on the need. I might have some company as a partner for working on my applications, but the Contract says only partner people should be able to access my applications, not my users using their applications. So it could be one way relationship also. It depends. How do we configure the trust? Correct. Now, what is B2C? Business so to customer. Business to customer. So does B2C include Azure AD, Azure AD B2B already? Yes. And B2C adds one more feature business to customer means what within organization users supported partner users supported then. Individual customers. users who are not officially created within my active directory like Saket Karnak at hotmail.com is also allowed. To access my applications, right? Any use case for this? which you have already used or if not used at least seen. In a B2C we can add the guest user. Huh, so I'm asking for the use case. Uh, yeah, go ahead one by one. Yeah, suppose that there's any uh, website where some uh, some live streaming is there or some cricket matches there. You want uh, everybody to view it. So that time mm -hmm. you can use AD, ADB to see. Any specific business case? Like banking. OK, but don't you think in case of banking, the users are actually created by bank bank people only. We do get some tokens based on which the users are activated, right? Customer ID is generated by yes. them only. Only yes. the alias we create, right? Yes. Uh, so that we customer can, portal. 
yeah correct so we can log in using either customer id or probably the custom username which you, we might have created as an alias am i right password is a self service thing password has to be set by my uh, set by the end, uh, end user only so that may not be coming into b2c i cannot just allow anyone to register and use so sanket net banking is a part of like active directory right active Wherein... directory yes okay so we we got some of the uh, test cases like uh, we got uh, our applications like dynamics 365 where mm. uh, the partners are supporting us for this particular application absolutely so, so you so, have dynamics you have office yep. office solutions office 365 precisely yep. where azure ad b2c is being used see azure uh, ad b2c i said for dynamics and office why yep. reason the user can be an organizational user or user can be individual one also there is office 365 personal account also right yeah that's true and then organizational users are also there. So your organization partners with Microsoft. That's true. And whatever the user base your organization has got in its own AD is by default allowed to access office features or office services. Correct? Yeah. Using the organizational user ID password only. Password yeah, only, yeah. Using the single sign on. Single or sign on. Uh, you don't yeah. need to have a separate user account created. Correct? Yeah, that's true. And similarly, if I'm looking for the personal usage, I can use my ID like Saket Karnik at hotmail.com also, right? Yeah, the third party or whoever are there, they can directly. Correct. Correct. So I don't have any organization involved in that case. It is only for me. That's true. right. Yeah. So that is where the Azure AD B2C comes in, which adds on to what a Azure AD and Azure AD B2B have. Correct. Yeah, thank you. Azure AD is the base on the top of which Azure AD B2B comes in, driven by Azure AD Premium, and then Azure AD B2C comes in, which adds individual users being able to access your services and apps as well. Right. So, uh, sir, uh, like, yeah. Let's let's assume if we are uh, accessing LinkedIn application, right? Yes. Yes. So we are registering ourselves as a like individual user. So that will also correct. come under AD B two C. B two C. Correct. Correct. Because now LinkedIn is officially uh, providing the organizational accounts also. So earlier it was only B two C solution, but now it is a combined one. Uh, Within organization users plus partner organizations, I mean the organizational users uh, plus the uh, individual users, all are allowed to uh, create uh, accounts on it and use it. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Right. Precisely, we can focus on LinkedIn Learning Portal, which is basically used for online trainings and all. So which actually uses this Azure AD B2C behind scenes. OK. OK, so let's see how exactly we proceed. How do we create Azure AD B2C tenant? And how do we integrate that with our application? OK, so I'll just open the browser here. And head on to portal.azure.com which user I should be using here any user which has got an active Azure subscription right because I'll be deploying a resource here this user has been enabled for multi-factor authentication, so it says that OK, I need to sign in with the help of my phone. It sends a notification. Microsoft Authenticator integrated one. So let me check. I might have received the request in my Authenticator. I select the desired number and approve. So this should just go in. 
I'll say yes to keep me signed in for a while. Now, this is not the subscription I want to use actually, so I'll just say switch directory. All directories, I'll go for pay as you go. As this is the only active subscription I have right now. And here I say, go to the hamburger menu, create resource. What I'm looking to create? Azure Active Directory B2C tenant, right? Here is the category for all the services provided by the Azure Marketplace. Which category I should select here? Identity. 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 That's right. Now there are two options: Azure Active Directory and Azure Active Directory B2C. There is nothing for B2B as such. So what did I say? You start with the standard Azure Active Directory and then upgrade it to Azure AD Premium. That will provide you the B2B features, right? Here, if I select this, Azure Active Directory. It does ask for the tenant type as well. You must have a subscription in order to create an Azure Active Directory. OK, this, this should not have been the case as it's a pay as you go subscription, so it should have worked. There might be something wrong with my credit card registration. I need to check that. So here also you have choice. You can by mistake if you have selected Azure Active Directory standard one, you can actually change it here by selecting Azure Active Directory B2C. Or else you can simply go back and say create Azure Active Directory B2C. OK, there seems to be some issue. Let me check. Give me a moment. Most likely this must be a old credit card registration which is creating the problem. Yeah, that's the case. So I'll just get it activated with the new card or let me see if I can go with free trial. It's not allowed. I'll just go with. Free trial. Uh, due to security reasons, I'm not doing it on this screen. OK, I'm just doing it in private. I'll just get back.
So almost done. Few more seconds and we will be good to go. I'll just refresh this page to reload. I'll start over. Create a resource. Identity is what we selected, and this is a direct option to select Azure Active Directory B2C. The other way around, I can also start with Azure Active Directory. Just make sure you don't click on Create. You click on the option Azure Active Directory. So the interface allows you to select standard directory or B2C directory. So let's say I select B2C. Next. Organization name is required over here, so I'll. Name this as OI Quanto so some fictitious organization. OI for optimistic info systems and then Quanto so. Domain, let's say, is oicontoso.onmicrosoft.com. And the location depends on where my majority of the users will be located. Because right now, this is a test application uh, requirement that we will be creating. I'm going with India because the users effectively will be from India right now. Subscription automatically selected and here I need to create a new resource group. As there is no resource group as of now, so I'll call this as. Demo dash RG for resource group. Resource group location I'll say is. Central India. That's nearest to me. Always choose the location based on. The majority of user base nearest to them. Location should be chosen. Create. The bell icon basically is responsible for showing us. The status update or the progress. So we get the feedback here also on the main page. So process eventually is entirely same regardless of which type of active directory tenant you are creating standard that is basic or uh, B2B or B2C. Just few details you need to mention and few clicks and your tenant gets created and then it is all about integrating your application with that tenant. So again, it depends on which type of application you are creating and which platform you are using for creating that tenant or that application. If it is API process will be different. API and .NET process is different. API and Java process is different. Correct. If it is a front end application you are creating. Say ASP.NET or MVC based. It is different. Again, if it is client side application which needs authentication authorization, so again the process is different for that. But different tutorials are already available. I'll meanwhile just pick, ping you the
link for the same. Sakit, do we need to create the uh, tenant every time for each application or one tenant can occupy the multiple? See, because I didn't have any tenant I had to create and the okay. same tenant you can uh, just use as far as uh, you want the same user base to be maintained with single sign on. The okay. moment you decide that, OK, now for this application, the user base is going to be different because my audience is different, entirely different. There I create a new tenant. OK, so uh, for in our situation, you do currently don't have any tenant. That's why you're creating tenant. Yes, so correct. if we have to do it, uh, we can use our existing tenant. Existing also, right? tenant also. Just make sure it is B2C to use oh. B2C features. OK, okay. otherwise the individual users, retail users will not be allowed, right? Yes, yes. As I get with the same user later, we can customize also, right? By adding yes. another application as well. Yes, yes, yes. So here it says that the tenant is created. I'll just. Click on this link. Hi, Saket. Yeah, uh, user belongs to the different reasons that that times every times we create the new tenant. No, uh, basically majority of the users location you have to pick as the base and uh, then users from any part of the world basically can use the same tenant also. It is just that authentication requirements will reach one central location, right? So there might be some, uh, I mean, bit of latency. It will not be uh, big enough, actually, not very considerable one, I would say. Uh, the reason is only the authentication request is going, right? Uh, you will not be downloading or querying huge amount of data as such. So it won't make much difference, but yeah, if it is near to your user base, uh, in that case, uh, even that few milliseconds of latency or few microseconds of latency will also not be there. Got my point? Yeah, I got it. OK, so here comes the ADB2C portal and I can actually manually register my applications here. If already existing application is there, I need to follow this flow. I just need to say app registrations and then go for new registration. And then if I wish to create some users. Pre create some users I can create by clicking on users. My existing user as an admin already has been registered, so I can create new user locally for this directory. I can add guest user also. Adding guest user means it will actually send an invitation. It will not be like without consent uh, the user for that particular person will be created here they have to accept the invitation they have to complete that flow and then only the user will be activated here right and then for enabling multi-factor authentication we already have a link over here also so i'll just go back one level roles also can be defined Policies can be created here. Conditional access is there. Risky users mean you can actually uh, enable some sort of uh, watches on them, their patterns. You can probably mark them as blacklisted as well. Right? Risk detection already there. So you have the entire tooling available, which usually is required while working with secured access. Now just for quickly. Creating an application as a demo which uses this ADB to see uh, for authentication purposes. I'll just go ahead and start Visual Studio 2022. You can use 2019 also if required or if you have that. I'll say create a new project. I'm looking for a simple MVC based application so. I'll look for C sharp language based application. I'm looking for. Cross platform one, so all platforms and then a web application, so web and there I select ASP.NET Core web app. Or maybe I can also go for. ASP.NET Core web app model view controller. I can go with the .NET Framework based web app as well. That will be easy one. If you have not worked with .NET Core, then this is the easy one to try out. 
let's select this asp.net web application.net framework it actually puts the guidance in place by placing automatic code what you will be required to have uh, integrated in your existing application as well i'll call this as demo app and let's set the location for this so maybe desktop new folder webinar in which i want this app to be created latest framework version what i have on my machine i select and i say create here i'm looking for mvc based application and see important step is this authentication none means no authentication individual account means typical forms based database driven authentication windows means windows integrated authentication microsoft identity platform allows me to connect to different sources including active directory on azure as well so i select this and then i say create and it should have asked for the active directory also probably some different flow is there yeah Okay, so the screen like this opens up. Once the application is created, Microsoft Identity Platform as a service dependency has been added. Here I just go ahead and use this three dots and select connect. .NET MS Identity Tool is what I want to use. I say next. So actually, some packages it is going to download and install. And as I said, depending on which kind of application you are creating, uh, which platform you are creating in, this process might be little different. But yeah, the basic thing what you would be doing remains the same, the concept. Okay, so here the account is sakitkarnik at hotmail.com. I'll just change to that and see if I have got my subscription here. In fact, my uh, Active Directory tenant is what I need to connect to. So OI counter so is what we have created, right? I'll select this. And I want the app registration to be created now. So here you can see Visual Studio assist me in creating app registration right from here itself. Instead of going to portal and create one. I can say create new. I'll say this is going to be called as demo app. Register. Okay, what's wrong? Wait, let me cancel this, save this, and start Visual Studio in admin mode. Just say run as admin. This is the app. Go to connected services dashboard. So I am here. Next. Next. Oh, I can't so. Create new. Demo app. Uh -oh.
may be because it's in one drive let me close this again and move this application to some other location webinar folder i'll move my c drive should have opened it in admin mode. Visual Studio, oops, so sorry. Yeah, so this is the one C drive webinar, demo app. Connect. Hope it works this time. It's actually a new setup on this machine, so there seems to be some config issues. Yeah, it worked. See, it has created an app registration already, which means if I go to the portal here and go to app registrations, I should be able to see something here. Yes. Once it, the process is completed, I'll see the name demo app as well. Next, and then I say finish. Close, it's done. Save what all things I've got here. In web config, I do have some app setting section where you can see all IDA. I mean, the keys with prefix IDA colon are all Active Directory specific things. Right? My tenant ID has been mentioned over here which says that, okay, this is where I need to connect for authentication requirement. Then controller has already got a account controller, which has got sign in, sign out methods. How to sign in, how to sign out, it's already configured here. Right, and in app start, startup.auth.cs file contains the actual service, which is going to be used for connecting to the Active Directory tenant and getting the authentication done. So this is the code which has been already generated. So if you are looking to convert your existing application to make use of these services, you can actually put this code manually here and go ahead. Now, if you go to your home controller by default, we have got authorized attribute as well, which means even to access the home page or home view, I will require the login to be done first of all. Without that, I'll not be allowed to log in. I'll build the application once. So build. Build solution. Meanwhile, I'll go to the portal. And under all applications, I'll do a refresh. Demo app is also there, right? Here, all the details are there. So this I would have done manually for an existing application by coming over here and saying new registration. So display name, then here I select who is allowed to access this application, single tenant. So that is typical standard version of the Azure AD. If I'm looking for B2B along with uh, the current organization users, second option any Azure ID directory multi-tenant. And then we have accounts in any identity provider or organizational directory for authenticating users with users, user flows, right? So this is typical B2C behavior. 
and now i have this already so i can just run the application locally as well to test it out optionally i can host it on azure as a app service and test it out there as well it's one and the same thing see by default right now i am already logged in with this user account so it got me logged in directly let me copy this url and see if i have some other browser installed in fact i don't have so maybe i can start with incognito window and see if it goes to the user flow yes incognito doesn't have any cookies and anything right so here i have to explicitly say log in with the correct user so i put my detail that's the only user available right now so i go ahead and say next send notification because my user has been configured for multi factor i authorize it and i'm logged in so it's my choice whether i want to stay signed in or not if i say sign out it will go to the sign out page automatically and this branding can also be changed right now by default it is showing all microsoft branding so if i wish to change it where do i do that let me close this let me close this let me close visual studio also here we do have something called as company branding configure and see here i can provide all the details what background image for the page i can i want to provide the banner logo username hint what i want to put sign in page text what i want to put the entire cms is available for that login experience so you set up everything over here and your login page branding will be according to what you have given customized just like when you log into your organization's apps by default your organization logos and branding comes in you might have already seen that even while working with office 365 also it gives you your organization's uh, branding there yes or no yes right on if i wish to yes. create a new user here i can create i can also say invite some user right i have options in my organization i want to create i want to invite a new guest user to collaborate with my organization mainly this is for b2b and then create azure ad b2c user new user in my application but will be the retail user created i just need to provide name and email address first name last name the pa password will be set up by the user di directly got it yes and then if i wish to enable multi factor authentication what i had i go to users for user multi factor authentication right now it won't allow me to do it for my currently logged in user because it's already enabled at a different level globally in hotmail itself i have enabled it if i wish i can eventually say enable here also right not required because it's globally enabled independent users which are created or organizational users which are created added here i can just select those users and i can say enable so mfa will be automatically enabled it's easy got it plus i have already given a link in the chat box if you have uh, seen this this actually contains different use cases tutorials etc to try out while working with 
or while trying out the Azure Active Directory B2C features. Right? So if I just open that same link. It looks like this. So this is about then uh, I mean the conceptual stuff what we have discussed already so you can ignore this part. There are some quick start already. For ASP.NET app, we tried out, but I think this must be for ASP.NET Core app. And the app is already created in Git, which you can use and you can just focus on the actual thing. Right. So even the other providers also, it is uh, allowing you to add. So it's not only Azure ready, maybe the Facebook user, Google user also you want to allow. Right. Third party users also you want to allow. It's It's allowing that. This is for desktop app. This is for single page app means react or angular based apps if you are having. And then there are some tutorials as well. Which includes the part how to create Azure ADB 2 C tenant. We just saw that. How to do the app registration. How to create user flows and custom policies. Management of the tenant. Within which again there are different options and then cleaning it up all different samples already there right uh, for existing applications if you want to work with it yes you can just go through this you can download this entire tutorial as a pdf as well and offline you can browse there are how to guides also available like if you have a specific requirement we have how to guides as well. Within a two hour session discussing all these things and giving a demo for all these things is not possible. I hope everyone understands that. That's why I just shared the link here. You can just go through it. OK, and if you need a full fledged uh, training on this, we are always there. You can always reach out to us. My colleague Preeti Navjot will help you out. File. OK. So that is it for the day. I hope everyone enjoyed the webinar. Uh, Preeti Payal, if you are there, you can share my uh, email ID with uh, all the participants within the chat. Uh, guys, if you have any queries later on, also if you need any guidance, you can just always uh, reach back to me over the mail. Thanks. Thanks for attending. See you soon again Thanks. for some other webinar. Yeah. Thank you, Sakit. Thank you, Sakit. Thank you, Sakit. So there would be a small feedback form shared uh, by uh, either Preeti or Payal. Uh, they will put the link uh, in the chat box in some time. Just complete that uh, feedback, please. OK, Sakit. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Sure. Thanks. Any Thanks. recording link? Uh, Preeti will be helping you out with that because okay. uh, directly the link will not be accessible. She will host the entire recording on YouTube and that link will be shared with you over the mail. OK, thanks. OK, thank you. So by evening you should get it because it takes some time to download and then upload it to YouTube. Oh, we'll share by the evening. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You, thank you, sir. Thank you, Sakit. Thanks. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Sakit. Bye. Shika, please do share the, the feedback link. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sharing. Preeti shared the link. Please fill okay. the form, please.